The leader of Russia's Wagner mercenary group is believed dead. Yevgeny Prigozhin was one of Vladimir Putin's most important allies until he led a June rebellion against Moscow's military leadership. Now, Russian authorities are saying that Prigozhin was listed as a passenger on a flight that crashed en route from Moscow to St. Petersburg. All 10 people on board the private jet were reportedly killed. A telegram channel affiliated with Wagner is also saying that Prigozhin died in the crash. Now, none of these reports, however, have been independently verified, but they come exactly two months after Wagner fighters launched a short-lived mutiny. It was seen as the most serious challenge to President Vladimir Putin since he took power. Since that short-lived rebellion, Prigozhin's whereabouts have been unknown, and his fate has been a subject of intense speculation. It was initially thought that he had gone to Belarus as part of an amnesty deal, but two days ago, he resurfaced in a recruitment video that circulated online that appeared to show him in Africa. Wagner maintains a military presence on the continent, and in the video, Prigozhin seemed to indicate it was business as usual for his mercenary group. Much is still unknown about Yevgeny Prigozhin's fate, but in his home city of St. Petersburg, where Wagner Group has its headquarters, supporters have begun erecting a makeshift memorial for the mercenary leader. Prigozhin's story is a remarkable one. He rose from being a food vendor to become Putin's personal chef in the Kremlin. His growing power as a mercenary leader became clear during Russia's invasion of Ukraine until his ultimate fall from favor. We know, Sarah, that the seven dead passengers you mentioned it, and the three crew members have been found and identified. We know from the Russian aviation authority Ros Aviatsia that the financier of Wagner, Yevgeny Prigozhin, and the commander of Wagner, Dmitry Utkin, were on the passenger list. What I still don't know is whether Prigozhin was actually among the passengers, which means among the dead now. Uh, there is still no official confirmation on this, just a report by the Prigozhin-affiliated Telegram channel zone, and also we don't know what ultimately caused the plane crash, whether the plane was uh, exploded from the inside or was shot down from the outside. There is evidence for both theories, and in both cases, a deliberate involvement of the Russian authorities or just criminals couldn't be ruled out. Given all of that, what has been the reaction in Russia? Well, there has been no official reaction from the Kremlin so far. There is wild speculation on the media about what really happened, from the dramatic accident to the staged crash. Uh, the social media is full of hateful and ironic comments. Uh, many suspect that Prigozhin is actually not among the dead passengers. Photos are posted showing his face with different wigs. Uh, such photos appeared after the mutiny two months ago, and it also became known at that time that Prigozhin had different passports with different names to different identities. Was Prigozhin still considered a threat to Putin after his mutiny had failed and, and he left, or reportedly left Russia? Well, I don't think that uh, Prigozhin posed a real threat or posed a real threat to the Russian president. Um, according to the uh, alleged agreement between Putin and the Belarusian leader Lukashenko, directly after the mutiny who, uh, two months ago, uh, Prigozhin went first to Belarus. After that, he allegedly went to Africa. A video from uh, there was recently published, you said it, even though we don't know if that video was real and where exactly it was recorded. However, we can't completely rule out the possibility that his soldiers could still be able to launch a new mutiny, a new coup against Putin. But I think everybody in, Israel, in Russia was rather wondering when Prigozhin will finally be punished for his mutiny. Such a crash would at least be logical as a penalty, but again, we don't know what actually caused it. And what is likely to happen now to the 25,000 Wagner fighters who served under Prigozhin? Well, that's a good question. Uh, indeed, if both leaders of the Wagner Group, businessman and financier Prigozhin and military leader Utkin, are indeed dead, then the days of the Wagner Group as a unified military group are over, I believe. Uh, look, Prigozhin, despite all his cruel deeds, his martial and crude appearance, was um, yeah, a kind of charismatic leader, at least for the paid mercenaries fighting on the front lines. So I can imagine that Wagner unit will no longer exist as a brand 
friend, but many of the soldiers are likely to, to want to continue fighting as mercenaries. The only question is who pays them? Uh, the Minister of Defense pays well, very well by Russian standards, but apparently not as well as Prigozhin. DW's Yuri Rochetto, thank you. And that was Yuri Rochetto speaking with me earlier. As we've been mentioning, Yevgeny Prigozhin's home city of St. Petersburg, supporters there have begun erecting a makeshift memorial for the mercenary leader. His story is really a remarkable one, and we're going to hear a little bit more about that, because his growing power as a mercenary leader in particular became clear during Russia's invasion of Ukraine until his ultimate fall from favor. Here's more. For a few hours, it looked like Yevgeny Prigozhin posed a real threat to Russian President Vladimir Putin's hold on power. The world watched in suspense as Prigozhin's Wagner mercenary group seized control in Rostov-on-Don, one of southern Russia's biggest cities, and then advanced north towards the capital, Moscow. Then, several hours later, Prigozhin suddenly called off the operation. He said he wanted to prevent bloodshed and that his intent was never to overthrow the government. Right up until the mutiny, Prigozhin was seen as a loyal ally of the Kremlin leader. After serving a prison sentence for robbery, Prigozhin worked his way up to become a successful restaurant owner in St. Petersburg, earning him the nickname Putin's chef. Eventually, it led to catering contracts for the Russian government. His next business venture was quite different, though. Founding a private militia known as the Wagner Group in 2014, the same year Russia illegally annexed Crimea from Ukraine. Prigozhin also established a media group, including a troll factory. The United States and other countries accuse it of trying to interfere in elections. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine faltered, Prigozhin began hiring thousands of soldiers, including convicts, to fight in Wagner units, aiding the Kremlin's war effort. Their perhaps biggest triumph was taking the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut, after months of fighting in which Russia's regular army had been unable to prevail over Ukraine. But as Prigozhin found himself more and more in the spotlight, he used it to rail against Russia's military leadership and its conduct of the war, including the accusation it was not providing his mercenaries with ammunition. Prigozhin's feud with the civilian leadership escalated when he refused to let his fighters be put under defence ministry command. And so, Prigozhin launched what he called a march for justice. We came here to put an end to the disgrace of our country. This here is a first step. What we're doing is right. It's to save Russia. In Moscow, a shocked Vladimir Putin called it treason, a stab in the back in the middle of war. Any internal turmoil is a deadly threat to our statehood, to us as a nation. This is a blow to Russia, to our people, and our actions to protect the fatherland from such a threat will be tough. With his mutiny aborted, Prigozhin left Rostov-on-Don to cheering crowds. But the weekend of chaos had left a precarious future for himself and his Wagner empire. In the days that followed, President Putin embraced his supporters, trying to project strength after Prigozhin's extraordinary challenge to his rule. And for more on this topic, let's bring in defense analyst Marina Myron from King's College in London. Welcome to the program and thank you so much for joining us. Russian officials say that Prigozhin is dead. Do you believe that he died in that plane crash? Good morning, Sarah. Well, it's very difficult because we don't really have any sort of verification. And if he is indeed dead, um, this would have coincided with the molding of General Surovikin. So in terms of timing, it would be a sort of symbolic two months after the mutiny and on the same day that um, General Surovikin, who was allegedly involved uh, to some degree in the mutiny, or at least he had knowledge, um, has been demoted. 
And knowing Putin and how he treats his opponents, that wouldn't be surprising. However, what is interesting is that uh, Prigozhin's second plane apparently was safe. And um, what we know is that his name was on the passenger list, but we don't know if he was on the plane. And from the operation security perspective, traveling together with another high profile person on the same plane would seem very unlikely because Prigozhin wasn't uh, stupid. And I think he knew exactly what the risks are. So then tell us, because I mean, you're very familiar with the military situation and, and the way that it might operate there. If he really is dead, what sort of message do you think this sends to any Putin rivals or military leaders? And especially, um, you know, given that it, these reports are happening um, and coinciding with the demotion of Sirovikin that you've also mentioned. Well, it would be a hallmark of Putin's revenge because we have seen this before um, when you when Putin used his intelligence services such as the SVR or the FSB to take out his opponents. And in some cases, he used poisonings. In some cases, um, those were more brazen in order to deter potential opponents from acting out against Putin. And I think because Prigozhin organized this mutiny and it was televised all over the world. Everybody was watching. So his death, if he's dead, had to be equally spectacular as to show who is still in power and that Putin will not t tolerate any treason or disloyalty. How about the Wagner mercenaries themselves? Because we saw this absolutely spectacular um, aborted mutiny. Is there the potential for those mercenaries who remain to make any further power moves, including against regular Russian troops, for example? Well, uh, Prigozhin was really popular amongst his own soldiers. So it was more like a family. He was a um, very charismatic leader. And so I think if Putin made this move, if he is indeed behind the assassination, he would have found somebody to replace uh, Prigozhin, or at least he would have found a way to ensure that there wouldn't be any blowback from Prigozhin's mercenaries, because that is a risk. It's a very well um, trained group of some 25,000 fighters. So removing, decapitating the Wagner group could potentially backfire. And we have seen what Prigozhin was able to do with those people or a fraction of those people, as a matter of fact. So I think that um, the reason we're seeing it now is because Putin has found a solution on how to um, maintain control of that group. But I think um, psychologically, the supporters of Prigozhin um, uh, within the military, they, they might be upset, but I don't think they have the power to stand up or to organize any, any sort of um, their own rebellion, so to say, because everything is well controlled and this um, um, alleged assassination is another display of what will happen if you actually do go against the regime. When you look at all of these moving parts, uh, the reports that we have been seeing over the past 24 hours and just the general situation that you've also been seeing um, in the wake of the, uh, the failed mutiny, how do you predict that this will influence the fighting in Ukraine? Well, right now, we uh, we have seen that after uh, Prigozhin had withdrawn from U Ukraine, that is, the Wagner Group, um, nothing has really changed. And even during his mutiny, um, it didn't really have any effect on what was happening on the battlefield. So at least for now, I don't foresee any changes besides some of his fighters did indeed sign the contract with the Ministry of Defense, meaning that they will most likely be deployed to Ukraine again. Um, that being said, of course, Putin has potentially lost a very effective tool, um, which could be used to solve very difficult tasks on the battlefield that the regular military is not capable of doing. So down the line, it might be something that would be missing in Putin's arsenal. But right now, I don't foresee any changes per se. Defense analyst Marina Myron, uh, thank you, as always, for sharing that expertise. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.